in the beginning, there were four. Chaos, the endless void of nothingness. Gaia, the very earth under our feet. The foundation of anything that is and can be. Tartarus, the vast pit of torment deep under Gaia. And Eros, desire and love. A sense of direction for this otherwise lifeless world. Over time, parts of chaos calmed and became Erebus, the darkness, and Nyx, the night. Then, something unprecedented happened. From the bond between Erebus and Nyx came Aether and Hemera, light and day. From Gaia came three more. Uranus, the sky, replaced the void above Earth. Pontus, the sea, filled the basins of Earth with water. All the while, the Urea, the mountains, came to tower over the rest of the Earth. The world had begun. The creation of the world was just one of the many questions that ancient Greeks imagined answers to in their myths. Without our modern scientific tradition, answers about the natural world had to be created in a different way. To do so, aspects of nature were made into human-like spirits, complete with personalities. This tradition of personifying aspects of nature did not start with them. Ancient Greece existed from around 750 to 150 BCE. This story begins with the rise of, let's call them democratic city-states, and important milestones such as the reinvention of writing and the first Olympic Games in 776 BCE, and ends with the conquest of Greece by the Roman Empire. But what preceded ancient Greece? Well, the Mycenaeans and Minoans were civilizations that existed in Greece 300 years prior, but were destroyed in the Bronze Age collapse. It is important to understand that many Greek deities existed back then, with the names of up to 10 of the 12 Olympians found in Mycenaean writing. However, the practice of personifying aspects of nature is even older, dating back to prehistoric rituals. Over time, individual aspects of nature were combined into stories to try and explain more complex interactions, like the different seasons of the year. In Greek mythology, this is explained by Demeter, the goddess of farming, among other things, dealing with the loss of her daughter Persephone to Hades, god of the underworld. Long story short, her daughter has to spend three months of the year in the underworld against her will. As such, during these three months, Demeter is sad and makes the ground barren and fruitless, explaining why we have winter. While some tried to find less superstitious explanations for natural phenomena, they weren't always successful, and so the only accepted explanations, the mythical ones, persisted in the minds of people for a long time. Besides explaining natural phenomena, myths also explained aspects of Greek culture and morality. The myth of Midas told the story of a king that was given the power to turn anything he touched into gold. Midas very quickly realizes this is a stupid gift as all his food and possibly his daughter are turned into gold at his touch. The moral of this story should be clear. Festivals were interconnected with myth and full of mythic symbolism. For example, the most important festival in Athens was Athena's alleged birthday, August the 13th. Myths were warnings against being uppity with gods, attempting to go against destiny, or the general evil that resides in all humans. Myths were educational and disciplinary tools as much as anything else. The real history of the Greek people was interwoven into myth, since many myths came from predecessor cultures like the Mycenaeans and Minoans, it is easy to see how over the centuries retellings of historical events could have morphed into fascinating tales mixed with folklore. Greek myths can be arranged to form an approximate timeline of the world. First, in the Age of Gods, 
the world was created and the current pantheon of gods was constituted. After that, in the transitionary age, gods would often interact with mortals, resulting in demigods. In the last age, the age of heroes, various human characters became the center of myth. It is in this time that many quasi-historical myths were set. The most famous of them include the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad tells the story of the Trojan War and features several well-known characters like Achilles. The Iliad claims this war was a conflict between the Mycenaean Greeks and the Trojans based in modern-day Turkey. For most of history after that point, this myth was thought to be pure fiction, but the discovery of the remains of Troy in 1871 cast it in a completely different light. On the one hand, it is very impressive that the Trojan War managed to survive being passed down as oral history from one generation to the next until Homer wrote his version of it in the 7th or 8th centuries BCE, but it obviously can't be taken as fact due to the many supernatural additions, a typical case of ancient Greeks seeking to make myths entertaining and not just serve a religious, social, or scientific purpose. In addition to all of this, Greek myths were in many ways the glue that held society together. Myths were quite regional, with most cities having unique patron deities, most famously Athens with Athena, who was said to have given Athens the gift of an olive tree when it was founded. The city where the myth originated from, or was otherwise connected to, was often home of the main temple, with priests that were focused on the cult of this god. Since myths were so regional, many gods actually began as local deities before being spread across the ancient Greek cultural space. This bonded ancient Greek city-states together and helped preserve the shared culture through many wars and rivalries. As with football teams today, local gods were a great source of pride for the citizens of the relevant towns, with many worshipping them with particular fervor. In 556 BCE, the former tyrant of Athens, Pisistratus, wanted to return to Athens after he had been exiled from the city some years prior. In a pretty clever move, he found an allegedly tall and pretty woman whose real name was Phaei and clothed her in armor to make her resemble Athena. He then rode into Athens with her by his side and was met with approval by the citizens, partially due to the stunt he pulled partially because he was generally regarded as a good ruler the last time he was in charge. The trick worked, not because the people of Athens genuinely believed that Athena had come down to bless Pisistratus with her good fortune, but because they saw that he knew what they wanted and that the figure of Athena was a promise to rule in her stead. Such was the importance of local deities to local society. Many people had a somewhat casual approach to mythology in terms of its spiritual aspects. They would generally believe that most myths had at least some aspects of truth. They were happy to participate in festivals in honor of various gods and would seek blessings from deities whenever necessary. However, some people had a much deeper spiritual connection with myths and would join what were called mysteries, which were essentially cults that had secret initiation rituals focused on venerating a specific god or myth. The Eleusinian Mysteries are perhaps the most famous. A crowd of initiates gathers at the Acropolis of Athens. They complete multiple rites, including the sacrifice of an animal. The crowd proceeds out of Athens to Eleusis. Along the way, they stop and shout obscenities in reference to an old woman who cheered up Demeter when Persephone was taken from her. Eventually, they reach Eleusis. They drink a special drink, Kaikion, a barley-based drink spiked with ergot, a fungus that has similar effects to LSD when ingested. They start hallucinating. It is night. They are led into the Telesterion, a great hall. There are three stages, secret under penalty of death. De Kumena, the initiates are shown multiple sacred objects. Legomena, 
the significance of these objects is explained. Dromena, a reenactment of the Demeter Persephone myth. The initiates gather to watch. The myth is acted out. She is lost. She is returned. Then comes the climax. The lights dim. The music swells. The ghostly figure of Persephone returns to Demeter, carrying her child. Bright light, the gong is hit. The priest yells. The terrible queen has given birth to her son. The terrible one. The procession retires for a feast and soon returns to Athens. If you couldn't tell already, the stories themselves were fascinating, full of drama and comedy. They were the inspiration for countless pieces of art, from vases to plays. Myths themselves were usually told orally, sometimes by professional orators. However, they were key to the development of ancient Greek theater in both its comedic and tragic versions. While you might think that performing myths and most plays were myths, was not really that noteworthy for an audience of people that most likely had a pretty deep grasp on most myths, it was nonetheless met with high praise, as the myths would usually be modified to emphasize tragic or comedic aspects, or make commentary on the social and political happenings of the day. Euripides was a great playwright who was known for his very advanced and modern plays. In 415 BCE, Athens was at war with Sparta. As always, the war was brutal and full of defeats and victories for both sides. Surrounded by the destruction and injustice, Euripides wrote The Trojan Woman, a play set in the aftermath of the Trojan War, focusing on some of the main female characters from the myth and the hardship they face as a result of this epic conflict. Through art, Helped by the universal power of myth in ancient Greek society, he managed to criticize his own country's conduct in the war and create an empathic appeal against bloodshed, which is all the more impressive when you consider this was over 2,000 years ago. In short, myths were explanations for everything ancient Greeks needed explanations for. They were the glue of society, the shared cultural and historical memory of ancient Greeks, and this would be used to their advantage by tyrants and artists alike. Myths are a treasure trove of information because they weren't just great entertaining stories, they were the key to understanding how people thought over 2,000 years ago. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like and subscribe buttons and check out some of my other videos.